welcome to the next edition of our vlog. It has been a little while since we've put one up, but there's been quite a few plans mulling along in the background. And so this vlog is a little bit different because it goes beyond just me talking. I've actually got somebody else in talking about Galway sheep. Um, so as you can probably tell, this vlog is going to be all about Galway sheep and Galway wool. Uh, like a lot of things, as I've been learning them, when I go into it, I don't necessarily know an awful lot about the topic. And the Galway wool and Galway sheep were one of those. I knew from several years ago when I did um, contemporary Irish knits, I, did, I knew very little about the Irish wool industry. Didn't realise um, how much of it was being created by imported fleece versus fleece that was from Irish wool. And tied with that was the fact that we have no scouring facility in Ireland. So anything that is produced here has to be shipped over to the UK to be cleaned and then it comes back to Ireland. So the process is all a little bit disjointed. Um, in addition to that, because wool has not been valued in Ireland for so long, the quality of wool has been basically downgraded because sheep are bred for specific purposes. And if the fleece is not being valued, then they're not going to breed sheep based on the quality and the softness of their wool, with the result that it becomes a downward spiral where the sheep don't really value it, which means that the, the quality of the wool they're producing is not as good. So if anyone gets hold of it, they're like, oh, I don't like that wool. So somewhere along the line, in order to change things, the cycle has to be broken. And one of the people that has been really instrumental in doing that has been Blawn and Gallagher, who we went to visit a few weeks ago in the Galway, in her Galway farm. She set up the Galway Wool Co-op with a few other founders um, a few years ago. It was 2021 was when it was officially set up. And it is specifically for the Galway, um, well, the Galway sheep and the Galway fleece, the Galway wool. Um, and it is the last indigenous Irish wool. It is, I've got actually got cones here. You can see it's a lovely, creamy, rich quality. And it would have been, when you think of Irish sweaters, Aran sweaters, um, and things from like the 40s and 50s that we, we, they had begun producing on the Aran Islands, um, this was likely to be the first wool that they would have used for it. It's going, be, main reason being is that it's got a natural creamy color which has become kind of synonymous with, um, with Irish sweaters for years and years. Um, and the actual colour of it would also be known as bonine, bon being white, een being a little bit white. So here they'd often be also known as bonine sweaters. And that comes from the actual colour of the fleece. But I'm going to actually stop talking for a little while in relation to the Galway and I'm going to actually leave Blohna to talk for herself and give it to you in her words as we visited her farm. You can see it's a small holding. We've actually got, we kind of made a little trip around some of her other animals that were there as well. And I did an interview in the sheep pen with her talking about Galway wool and about the actual project that she's involved in. Um, and after that, come on back here and I'll tell you a little bit more about specifically about the Galway uh, project that we are working on. A few weeks ago, we went up to Galway to visit Blohadid and Niall Gallagher's farm, where they primarily have Galway sheep. But you may spot a few others that look a little different wandering in through the field. There was some great poultry hanging out at the side of the farm. There was a donkey or two in the fields, masquerading as sheep occasionally. At the front of their building, they had an outdoor living space that was filled with all sorts of interesting vintage pieces that came from her uncle's farm. We've got old bikes, and back to the sheep. They're running into the shed, coming in to meet us. They're all gathered in here now, waiting to be fed by Blonid. They're looking extremely eager. Very, very eager indeed. 
In comes Blonnet, and this is exactly what they've been waiting for. They're such a docile, friendly sheep. It's it's really almost feels like having a, a pen of sheepy pets. So this is the crimp that exists in one of the younger sheep. So this is what we call a yo lamb. So she was born last year. She's last year's lamb crop. And you often hear people referring to garments being made from lamb's wool. That's because the younger the sheep, the softer the wool. Mm -hmm. um, so when the sheep becomes a mother and as she gets older, her, her, and when she's around in the elements a lot longer, her wool starts to thicken. Mm -hmm. So the lamb's wool is quite soft in yes. comparison to the yo's wool. Yeah. When we... What age would you be? How, how, how long would they be considered lamb wool for? A year. A year. So they're okay. lambs up until they've had uh, an offspring. Mm -hmm. um, and generally what would happen is that on farms like this, we tend to keep them for one year plus before we actually breed them because we want them to be of a particular weight mm. and a particular maturity. Right. And, you know, the heavier they are and the more mature they are, the yeah. more likely it is that they'll become, you know, they'll have less difficulty with the birthing process mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. So, so that's why we keep them. Some farmers breed them at, and it's fine to breed them at, at, at six, seven, eight months, um, you know, if they're mature enough. But we like to really, in the co-op, it's very important to us that the welfare of the animal is paramount. Mm -hmm. That these animals are, because they're so rare, there's less than 3,000 of them in the whole island. It's so important to us that they're cherished mm -hmm. and that we give back to them as much as they are giving to us in this abundant, beautiful, abundant white snowy wool, white mm -hmm. wool. And therefore, we like to ensure that they have the highest animal welfare standards that can mm -hmm. possibly exist. Within Europe, we have exceptionally high yeah. um, um, animal welfare standards, uh, which is part of the legislation that exists within the, Uni yeah. the European Union. But then within Ireland, we have another set of regulations, which is innate within sheep farmers here in Ireland, because they're so used to living in close proximity with their sheep and to have the sheep around the farm has always been an important thing for, mm -hmm. for sheep farmers. It's a love. Yeah. It's a passion. Yeah. It's wonderful. And your your garment um, or your, your whole material project or whatever you decide to make with Galway wool, that's coming true. It's like cooking. You know, when you cook a meal and you put a lot of love into mm -hmm. it. Well, if you were lucky enough to be able to get your hands on some of this heritage Irish wool, which is extremely rare, You'll, you'll feel that love. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll feel what the wool has done for biodiversity within the island. You'll feel the wool that the she the, she the love that the shepherd has given to the sheep. Um, and it all comes across because they're stress free. Mm -hmm. I'm here today with Lonas on her sheep farm in Galway and she breeds specifically Galway sheep. So I want to talk to her a little bit today about Galway sheep and also about what's so special about this particular breed. So thank you for meeting me today. I really, Not really at appreciate all. it. Carol, you're very welcome and we're delighted to have you and have all your followers here with us at the sheep farm. Uh, you are based in Galway but it's just coincidental because the sheep are called Galway doesn't mean that they're uh, from the region, it means that they're actually native to the whole of Ireland. Yeah. So they're the only breed at the moment that's recognised by the state as being indigenous. Mm -hmm. And they have this beautiful, up to five kilos they grow of snowy white wool, which is a strong wool. Mm -hmm. So it's not what your uh, followers would be used to. They're probably used to working with lots of softer wools. A variety. A variety, yeah. yeah, yeah, a variety. yeah, yeah. Well, this wool is particularly strong. So it means that it's quite durable. Yeah. But the beauty behind it is that it's so rare. There are less than 3,000 of this indigenous breed of, of sheep left in, in Ireland. Yeah. And this was the wool that was originally used by uh, spinners and knitters to create yarn for the iconic iron sweater. Mm. 
So back in the 40s and the 50s, when the Irish knitting industry was just getting going, yeah. this was the type of sheep that would have that been would found have been anywhere. Yeah. So what's the history of the sheep that you know of? Well, the history is that they were brought into Ireland, or they were bred by a British landlord who wanted the premium quality wool yeah. Yeah. for yeah. him to be able to sell back into the British markets yeah. and eventually go on to build a British yeah. empire. Yeah. So this landlord that was living in Ireland at the time put together several breeds and came up with this long wool breed which was the native breed to Ireland and became known as the Galway because it was in Galway County that the farmer started to, 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 to create a flock book. Now that flock book for your followers is 100 years old. There's no other type of wool that you can actually put between your hands or in between your needles mm -hmm. that's going to give you a provenance that goes back 100 years. So there are a lot of things that make it quite special. And then we have now through the creation of the Galway Wool Co-op uh, we have now found a route to market for authentic Irish grown wool because a lot of wool in Ireland says Irish on it but yeah. it means that it's been imported from the southern hemisphere and then it gets spun in spun Ireland yeah, yeah. whereas this particular wool is been grown yeah. in Ireland and it's very much part of our, 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 our drive to, to, to work as farmers with the environment. Yeah. So, and like up to this point, what you've done is actually very special with the Galway Wool Co-op and the starting of that, because there was not a breed specific wool co-op in Ireland before. So will you tell us a little about the origin of I that will. and how it got started? Yeah, yeah um, there was no wool co-op um, in the south of Ireland uh, previous to the initiation of the Galway Wool Co-op because um, we were just allowing wool that was coming off farm to be, and we still are unfortunately, allowing wool to be shipped abroad to the British woolen markets as waste. So currently wool is categorized as a waste byproduct of the meat industry. With the cooperative, we wanted to recognize the contribution that this particular breed um, had given to the Irish knitwear industry when it was used as the raw material for the iconic iron sweater. So we decided to, because we already had a register, there was a Go with Sheep Breeders Association. So there was an existing register, there was an existing plot book. So we decided to get these guys and gals to come together and to bring their wool to one central point in Ireland once a year. And we do so in Athen Rye um, and it's called a mehel. So if you're not familiar with the mehel, it's where people get together um, for, for, for the benefit of others. So it's a mehel means a meeting of hands. Mm -hmm. So the farmers all come together and they bring their wool to one central location. And by doing so, they bypass the traditional depots. And those depots are only able to offer the farmer um, a very, very, very minimum amount that wouldn't even cover the cost of shearing. Mm -hmm. And that small amount is called, is creating a lack of respect on farm for wood. Mm -hmm. Whereas at the co-op, what we've done is, in conjunction with Donegal Yarns, who have yeah. supported us for the last two years, they're offering the farmer two euro fifty. Yeah. Now what that it, it reverses. It makes the farmer feel well. Wow, I'm going to look after these yeah. this wool. It's precious. I'm going to make sure that the wool is presented cleanly. That it's traditionally rolled. It's being valued. I mean, that's the bottom Correct. line. Is that the wool is being valued and that it's an important product in its own right. Correct. It's, no, it's wonderful what you're doing. Actually, can we pull up the bag here? Of course I want we can. to. I want yeah, to show absolutely. you. This is this is what's come. I mean, I was. This is what comes off the sheep. Like, has this been processed at this no. point? No. This has that's, been cleaned. This we actually had this cleaned locally. Unfortunately, yeah. there are no cleaning processes. Um, of cleaning cleaning factories here in Ireland, but this one was uh, cleaned locally. Um, and as you can see, uh, before it's dried, which unfortunately gets dried out quite a bit over in Bradford, it actually has quite a nice luster. Mm -hmm. It's got a very long crimp, Mm -hmm. So it's 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 just a beautiful wool to yeah. work with. And I love the variations between like the darker cream. That's when it's closer to that's the, right. like or, or closer to the skin of the animal, and yeah, then it gets exactly. paler up near the top. Yeah, just lovely variety. Yeah. In what see the little tips on it there, beautiful. and the crimp that's in it is just phenomenal. Yeah. It's 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 beautiful. Oh, it's lovely. <laughs> it is lovely. It's absolutely wonderful, and I'm delighted that you enjoy it. And I'm so thrilled that the project that you're doing is going to give the farmers more of a reason if we don't have a reason it's if we don't have a special. source for the wood well then they'll start to disrespect it and yeah, the value yeah. is going to decrease again yeah. but you know what you're doing in the project is just fantastic because i can now go back to the farmers and say look guys this is something that's generating you know an interest mm -hmm. uh, for knitters here in ireland and for your knitters abroad but it's also going to contribute towards a charity 
Yeah. And the fact that we're actually able to create interest for the sheep and for the wool, and you're able to create such a wonderful interest among your followers in the passion for the project that they're about to undertake. I keep wanting to pet them. It's like being in a little field. They're, they're absolutely beautiful animals, I will say, is that like, if you, if you get, well, I mean, hopefully like, we can, we've taken a few close-ups and you'll be able to see them. They're very calm, very, very distracting animals because you just want to sit down and pet them almost like, sure. I, I, like almost like domestic pets, you know, which yeah. obviously they're not, but they are, they've got a lovely canvas about them for sure. Do you know why that is? No. No, because traditionally, um, you know, before farmers had to start taking up an alternative um, uh, income source on farms, uh, regrettably, sheep farming is in in Ireland where the where the poor relations to to oh, the lot of farming that goes on. You know, they don't make great. We don't we don't make huge incomes from sheep farming. Yeah. Generally, you tend to just have a passion for the animals, mm -hmm. which means the farmers tend to have an off farm income, which means that they don't get to spend as much time with their sheep. This breed, because its ancestors date back over hundred years, are very used to being around the farmer. Mm -hmm. They're very used to being They're around much more domesticated. Almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so they are as domesticated as you get when it as comes sheep to sheep. Get. Yeah, yeah. As sheep will get. Yeah. So they love being around the farmer, and the farmer loves being around them. We have a mix here at the moment. We have two ewe lambs. These girls will be used for breeding next year. Mm -hmm. um, as you can see, character the characteristics that make them so identifiable as being Galway. Um, will be the little bobs on their heads, the snowy white face, mm -hmm. uh, the leg wool, um, pink skin, uh, just a general inquisitive and a docile nature of them. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Dawn. It really, I hopefully that's going to give you all a little bit of an insight into the Galway sheep, what they look like, and why this project, like from start to finish, is so important in terms of actually bringing Irish wool and specifically Galway um, sheep to the forefront of, of, uh, of Irish knitting and all things folk. Thanks. So now you know a little bit more about the Galway sheep and it's now time to tell you a bit more about the actual Galway project. We were trying to figure out how to use the Galway wool and what would work best for and what would really, really allow it to shine. So as we've been talking a bit about the fact that Galway wool is a very rustic, a very strong wool. It means that it's not going to be like the fleece is extremely soft, but by the time it's been scoured and most of the lanolin taken out, it's not going to be super next to the skin soft. But it does hold cable. I've got a few little samples here, just little cable swatches that I've been doing and some textured patterns. And these ones are just little bits that haven't quite finished where it's still on the needles here, but it got removed. <laughs> um, but you can see from this that the actual texture from it and the cables are really, really beautiful. So when you knit with it, the cables bounce off the surface and the actual yarn is a very light, bouncy, warm feel to it. So we actually thought that a blanket project was going to be one of the most beautiful uses of it. Because to me, an actual, a warm, light blanket from this that really, I suppose it enhances the heritage qualities of the sheep and the fleece itself. So you're taking something that in its own right, the actual wool, has got heritage qualities because of its origin and the fact that they're actually trying to really bring the breed up and get it recognized you know, for its heritage status. So it, having an actual blanket that you finish and that you keep and that you get to pass down to other generations seemed a very, very fitting place for this wool to end up. We've got three designers going to be working on it. I will be working on it. Laura and Perham will be working on it and Emer Early. And we're all going to be putting together a series of squares. They'll be 10 by 10 inch squares. And each of us has designed four squares. Some of them will be kind of plainer textured stitch patterns. Other ones will be more ornate cables. Some of them will be simple cables. So it's going to be a little variety of cables. 
we're taking, um, each of us has kind of taken cables that we really like using and just kind of built it into these squares. Every them, obviously each of them will be the same size and then all of the actual cables themselves will be detailed in the video. So I'm going to go through the whole thing showing you how to actually work each of those stitches as we're going through. So it'll end up being quite a master class in cables by the time you're done because you're, it, it's like having a whole series of little samplers showing you how you can work the stitches for each of those, how to read charts and how to actually keep track of the charts as you're working through. We'll also at the launch, um, Blonid has actually very kindly agreed to join us and she's going to come live from the sheep pen at the launch. So we'll have the Galway sheep joining us for the actual project as well. It's going on pre-sale and there's two options of sizes. It'll be either a lap size, which is, you know, just a very sh a small one that would fit over your legs or a full throw size, which would be kind of a typical, you know, throw on the back of your sofa kind of size. So the sizings of those are going to be 30 by 40 inches or 40 by 50 inches. And the, the pricing obviously is different because there's different amounts of wool will go into each of them. Regardless of which one you actually join, you're going to get the projects or the, the swatches and the detailed instructions for each of them. The videos will get uploaded automatically on each time at each one of the uh, times they're released. And there'll be each of us of the three designers will have a particular swatch or square that's released they will pick one each and they'll get released every two weeks apart across, uh, for, for four release sessions. At the end of the whole thing, we'll then obviously kind of talk about putting it together and you can maybe, you know, how the different um, stitch patterns can be fit and what squares look well together, good waves of seaming, ways of, of putting an edging on it and things like that as well as obviously what you're getting from this, we're also going to have a very big charity component to it. So the Jigsaw charity is who we're going to be supporting with this, which is Youth Mental Health in Ireland. Um, mental health in Ireland for everyone, but particularly youth mental health is incredibly underfunded, um, both on the public and on the private side. So for anybody who, like at that age, if you need help and you need intervention, it needs to be quick because fast intervention can make a very, very big difference. And instead it could be, you know, a, a, a blip where you can actually get on track again, or it can end up defining you and basically setting you back for years potentially. Um, and so it really is a very, very worthwhile charity. We are going to be donating five euros from every kit that's sold. And uh, Donegal Yarns, who is the, are the mill that has spun the yarn, they are going to donate a euro for every kg of yarn that is sold. And finally, when the blanket is complete after the project is done in July, where the, the project or the blanket that my, the three of us actually knit on and finished, we're going to auction that off in July for charity with just will have raffle tickets and everyone can be in with a chance to buy it and all of the proceeds of that are going to go to Jigsaw as well. So we're going to have, you know, a triple charity component, so to speak, um, that goes along with this. So it just, it there's quite a bit involved in this project, like right from the Galway Wool Co-op, you know, producing the yarn, actually having the farmers from the ground up involved, Donegal Yarns spinning the yarn, the three of us putting the design together and then finally also having a, a big component for a charity that gets donated during and after the project. So uh, it's something I'm very excited about. Um, it took a bit of planning to pull together because we wanted to make sure we did the whole thing justice from top down as we were involved in it. Um, and I think it's going to be pretty amazing. Uh, I hope you get involved in it as well and just in enjoy the journey with us over the next few months. Thank you.